Hey guys, what is going on? In this video, we're talking the best settings to get cinematic footage out of the DJI Spark. It's Christmas Eve, so you know what that means. It's time for another Spark tutorial. I just realized that I didn't take the tags off new stuff, and you know, it looks fresh. Actually, this company, Hippie Tree, sent me a few things like this buffalo hat, this cool sweatshirt. I really like their product. They have a really cool design. It's all like rock, surf, good stuff. I don't know, Hippie Tree, check them out. But in this tutorial, we're talking about the best settings for the DJI Spark so that you can get cinematic footage. I've done tutorials on how you get cinematic footage out of drones, but this tutorial is specific to the DJI Spark and the settings in the menus that you should set up before you start flying. So these are things you need to think about on the front end before you go out there and fly because if you don't have these things set up and you're going out there getting some cool shots you're not necessarily going to be set up right so that you can get the best out of your flight all right so to do this i'm going to do a screen recording on my phone and i'm just going to show you step by step all the different settings that you need to take note of and you need to change to get the best cinematic footage all right so let's turn on the spark and let's get these settings figured out i've got my dinosaur and my gumby here to help out, give you a little something visually interesting to look at. So, okay, so the first thing's first. When we connect our drone, we're ready to go, we're ready to fly. Obviously it says cannot take off here because I'm sitting inside and I'm in a class B airspace when I'm outside of this area. When you go up to the top right corner, the three dots, that's gonna bring up your menu settings and we first need to fix some of the settings in the menu. We're basically gonna set up the Spark so that it is in the best position to get awesome cinematic footage. In the first menu, you're gonna to wanna to go down and you're gonna to wanna to set your home point just so that if you end up losing the connection, which it does happen with the Spark, that the Spark will return home. So on the screen, you have two settings to set this home point manually. The first one is basically wherever the drone is when the GPS connects, and then it will automatically set the home point right there. If you want to manually set the home point somewhere different than where that is, then you use the second button and it records the home point to where you are at with the controller. Now with this, if you're on a moving object, say a boat, it doesn't continually track you and go back to where you're at. So there's no fail safe if you're on a moving object because your spark might go back to where the home point was recorded in the water. So if you're flying somewhere like a boat, it's always a good idea to fly from the shore versus on the boat itself because you may lose your drone. All right, and then also set your return to home at current altitude or return to home at a specific altitude. So I've found that 30 works great for me. That's kind of the default. I haven't had an issue with that, but basically what that does is if you lose connection, it's gonna fly up to 30 meters and then fly back at that height. So depending on where you're flying, you might wanna adjust this or it will return to home at current altitude. That means wherever it's at, it's just gonna turn around and go back. So you gotta pick depending on what your situation is. I know those settings aren't for cinematic footage, but those are very important and something that you need to set before you start flying every time. In the visual navigation settings, you want to enable backward flying because to get cinematic footage, you sometimes want to fly backwards. I enable obstacle avoidance just because if it is going to hit an object, you don't want to lose your spark by crashing into something. There's only some situations where I'll turn this off. Usually to get cinematic footage, you can leave this on unless you're flying really close to objects. Then you might wanna turn it off. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now let's go to our customization buttons. You're gonna to wanna to do your top button as the camera forward down, and that's important because of our gimbal settings that we're gonna set in one second. Make sure that's set up because you wanna be able to flip from straight on to straight down with the flick of a button. You don't wanna to have to wait for the gimbal to go because we're gonna slow down the speed of the gimbal. And then on my other customizable, I usually just toggle the map in live view just so I can have that quick and accessible. The last setting in this menu setup is the gimbal. Your gimbal is gonna be set at a much faster speed. So what that means is when you push the gimbal wheel, it's gonna move at the speed that you set here. So about 46, you see how fast that's going, versus one, it goes really slow like butter. You can see Gumby in the background moving very slowly. You're gonna to wanna to set this at a speed where you can use it to get some awesome cinematic footage, but also not too slow. So personally, I keep it around 10, 11. That's pretty fast, but the beauty is this wheel is pressure sensitive. So if you only do the wheel at half, it's gonna go half the speed of 11. 
Because of that, I think that's a great speed because if I need to go faster, I can get there without having to wait forever. Now that you've set up your customizable button on your controller, you can hit it and it will just flip the camera down and back up so that you can easily go straight down or straight up so it's quicker to get to the shot that you wanna get instead of waiting for the gimbal to get there. Awesome stuff, right? So that's all those camera settings. Now let's go into the actual camera settings menu, which is the three lines with the dots. And first things first, you're always gonna to wanna to shoot manual to get cinematic footage. So manual basically allows you to set your ISO and your shutter. And before we start setting this, what you're gonna to wanna to pull up on screen, go to the gear, turn on your histogram, put it somewhere where you can see it. And your histogram is all your light values from zero to 100. So zero is black, 100 is overexposed. So you're gonna use a mix of your ISO and your shutter speed to get that curve to sit somewhere in the middle because that's gonna be the prettiest footage when you get ready to edit. Because the Spark has a baked in look, so you can't shoot super flat. You're gonna to wanna to get this spot on. You're not gonna to wanna to overexpose like this and not be able to recover those highlights. And on the flip side, you're not gonna to wanna to get it so dark that you can't bring it up and get a really noisy image. So the key is finding the happy medium where the curve is somewhere in the middle. And you're gonna be adjusting this as you fly in different lighting scenarios. But when you have it on manual, the, the, it's not gonna be flickering and going all over the place because of different light that hits the sensor. So you're gonna to learn to shoot manual because that is the best way to get cinematic footage and get stuff that looks really awesome. So now we're in the gear icon. You're gonna, your histograms are on, we already said that. The next thing you wanna do is go to your white balance and make sure you select a white balance that makes sense for where you're shooting. So you could do sunny if it's a bright sunny day, cloudy if it's cloudy, or you go into custom and dial it in based on what looks best. So you're just gonna have to play with this and find the settings that work best for you. Play with these sunny, cloudy. Most of the time you're probably gonna be shooting in sunny or cloudy and it'll work. The reason you don't wanna use auto, with drones you're flying through the air and you're seeing different things in your scene and your sensor is gonna react differently and your footage is gonna be going from orange to blue and you'll see the shift when you start editing and it looks horrible. So to get cinematic footage, you have to dial in your white balance. So you have to keep it just like the manual settings for your exposure, you wanna do manual for white balance. I plan to shoot sunny day, I'm gonna turn on sunny and that will be great. All right, and the last thing I do in here is turn on my grid lines and why do you do that? So you can use the rule of thirds when you fly. You're gonna to wanna to have your horizon at the bottom third, the upper third, or like a subject in one of the four intersections of the thirds. So just like Gumby right here, he is now in a third by Mr. Dinosaur. So now your composition has more visual interest because you're playing in the thirds versus putting Gumby right in the middle. And that's not as interesting if you're trying to get cinematic footage. The grid allows you to see your thirds. It just makes it very easy to put the horizon and different objects in the frame on those intersecting lines so that you can always get awesome cinematic footage. Okay, now that your drone is set up, you go out, you start flying, you get some awesome cinematic footage. I've got another video on 10 tips for cinematic footage out of the DJI Spark. I've also got a ton of other just cinematic footage related tutorials on our channel. So I'll link those in the description so you can check them out. Guys, if you're interested in any other topics about the Spark, please let me know. You're now set up with the best settings possible to go out there and get the best cinematic looking footage you can out of the Spark. The Spark's very limited compared to other drones. You only have one color profile. You don't have a lot of extra settings in the menu. However, the quality of the footage that you're getting out of the Spark is pretty awesome. I mean, it's an awesome package that you can get this quality of footage out of this little tiny drone. So don't worry that you don't have log, don't worry that you don't have some of these extra features that you know bigger drones have, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the camera that you're shooting on, it's the way in which you shoot the camera to get the best cinematic footage. I guarantee you, if you take someone and give them a spark and have them fly it, and they're very talented and they're very good at getting cinematic footage, and then you give like a newbie a Phantom 4, the Spark footage is gonna look way better, even though the Phantom 4 can shoot better resolution and a better codec so you can really color grade it. If you don't know what you're doing with the drone, if you don't know how to fly to get the cinematic shots, then the footage is gonna look like crap anyways. The quality and the resolution and all those things, the log, the raw, all that doesn't matter unless you can actually shoot in a cinematic style. 
So really hone in your craft, really work on getting those fluid shots, not being jerky, finding new ways to tell your story because that's what cinematic footage is all about. All right guys, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. If you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you're not celebrating Christmas, then happy holidays. Guys, we got a lot of awesome content coming out on this channel. If you haven't already, go over to Instagram, check us out, at Wanderworks. And guys, have fun, be safe flying your spark. It is a lot of fun and you can get some awesome footage. And guys, I will see you on the next one. I should probably go cut this off now.